Hello everybody, Jose Rodriguez here. It is now Thursday the 20th, about 8.50 in the evening. Earlier, I told you guys about a deal that I saw on eBay from a seller in France selling Canon Pro 10s for $16.99. You know, I should have seen through this. This turned out to be a big scam. And unfortunately, one of you you know, just like I did, fell for it. Luckily, I did not order anything, and I actually canceled the other order that I have mentioned here in the U.S. because the whole day the PayPal transaction stayed in limbo. Usually that goes right through. So I canceled it. I was able to cancel it. And yeah, buyer beware. You have to be careful. What I'm going to do is I don't think I'm going to be providing anyone with any of these... Uh, deals on eBay unless they have been proven by me actually purchasing some other items. Make sure that it is indeed a legitimate store on eBay. So, as I promised at the end of the video, I was talking about some subject matter that I'm going to be discussing. I found a series of shots having to do with the subject of shoes. This should be quite interesting. Now, some of them were flawless and then some of them needed a little bit of help. And by the way, I'm gonna do another one uh, soon. This will be macro foods. So all sorts of uh, food items taken via macro photography. And those are flawless. Those are flawless, I love them. Okay, so these were printed, wouldn't you know it, with the Canon Pro 10, the one that we were talking about and salivating over this amazing too good to be true deals, which turned out to be too good to be true. So here we have a diagonal lineup of dozens and dozens of shoes. And anytime you line up a repetitive type subject diagonally, it just makes it action. It just creates that action. It could be in this direction or in that direction, but since they are heading or pointing toward that direction, you want to go ahead, always line them up against these two corners here instead of the opposite way, which would be, it would not make sense since you're actually kind of pointing that way. You're going to be moving in that direction, so to speak. So let's put it right up to the camera. Somebody asked if I could put these a little bit closer. Here we go. I hope I'm not reflecting the shine that the Pro 10 produces with a chroma optimizer. Great shot, I love it. This deserves to be a big poster print at a shoe store. Here are the soles of what appears to be two sports type shoes. I'm not really qualified to comment on the brand or the type because you know I use very simple shoes. I'm not into that. This is flawless, it's beautiful. Very graphic, perfectly centered, beautifully um, framed and here we go as you can see also beautifully rendered okay now we're going to get into the ones that i actually fixed a little bit so here we have what looks like some fancy uh i don't know croc looking shoes or sandals they're made out of leather actually very nice a nice array of shoes well I did find a bit of a fault with them. Now, anytime you have this type of setup, you want a homogenous composition. So you want to be able to not have anything on the edges that's going to deter from the main content. We have a lot of shoes. Once one is inside the other, one is inside the other in matching pairs. And they have some laying down, some leaning, and then some in the back as well. So this is a display at some market somewhere. Well, this is driving me nuts right here. Very distracting. And this area here with no more shoes. Remember, these are all touching. So we need another set of shoes here in contact. So to fix it, simply crop it. Crop it a little tighter. That's all it takes. Now this is pretty much flawless. It's perfect. 
yes, there's still some shoe soles over here, but it's not as distracting as this is. Okay, so simple cropping. I did not change the aspect ratio for you purists out there. It's still the same as it was in the prior example, but this is a lot better. And I look at this and I'm not constantly looking for little faults because there aren't any. Same thing here. Nice pair of shoes at a display. This person shot through a glass window. I can see a reflection. And what is that? Well, that's part of the rear display showing. Uh, it wasn't framed close enough. Same thing here. There's a little bit of an edge of this piece of material. And it makes me look at it. That red spot from the camera reflecting off of the glass. It makes me look at it. Simple. Photoshop has the spot healing tool and cropping. That's all it takes. Look at this. This is now perfect. The shot was originally pretty close to perfect, but now it is. Now it conveys what the scene actually wants you to look at. And that's, you know, not look at anything around the periphery. You want to stare at that and go, wow, that's a pretty cool little picture. In fact, the store might actually use it. Not the other one. The other one looks really cheap. All right, so here we have, this is so cliche, a person somewhere, it could be anywhere, the beach, the picnic area, whatever, backyard, summertime, and you take a picture of your legs with your shoes. Well, look at all those people back there. I don't want to look at them. I'm looking more at them than I am at our shoes. So just use your clone tool. Also, it's a little bit too light. Darken it using your histogram. Make sure you have a complete spread of tones from the blackest black to the whitest white. And then adjust the middle tones. I completely cropped out all those people. I just cloned them out. If I don't tell you I did that, you will not see it. Now it's just that person alone. And this is the point of interest. This is just secondary. This is just part of the scene. I would have framed this a little bit different had I shot this, not with my ugly feet, but say for instance, uh, some pretty girl like my wife would be with me. I would shoot that, include some more, uh, make this a little bit more prominent. But again, the idea is still valid and quite nice. Now here is a display of boots with flowers inside the uh, boot. Very nice. This is some sort of post here. This could be outside. I think it's outside possibly in Europe somewhere. This is a street post. But by God, there's a bicycle wheel behind there. Now, why would you not change your camera angle? I mean, come on, this is awesome. And you gotta have that bike wheel. This is where the cloning tool comes in. And I got rid of it. Now you look at the boots. That's it. And I will end with one that I found no fault. And I thought it was amazing shot. It would have been even better had there been a little bit more blur to it. Look at that. Beautifully framed. Beautifully edited. This is just dark enough to focus your, your interest to those amazing legs and those amazing shoes. Look at that floor. Diagonal. Remember? Diagonal. Anytime you have repetitive patterns, line them up diagonal or straight up and down grid. One of those two. But corner to corner adds action to the scene. And again, this is just dark enough. I'm not at all. This is somebody's feet, legs, somebody's legs. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't really detract from my just staring at those legs. I mean, come on. And those shoes. So this is flawless to me. That's a beautiful one. All right, that is it. Short and sweet. Remember, guys. You have all of the control in the world when you are post editing. You don't have to be a thousand percent careful in your camera composition and framing. Yes, composition is very important. But often, and I cannot give you the exact numbers, I know my 
cheap little Nikon D3300 actually records more than I see on my screen. So I could be as careful as possible and I think I'm cropping off something that I want to you know eliminate and sure enough it's there in the image. Okay you have to actually shoot a little bit closer or a little bit tighter in order to actually sh crop out everything you think you're going to crop out. It's like uh, printing borderless. The image gets expanded and you lose something. Well the opposite happens when you shoot. You actually get more image than you bargain for. So you have to be very careful. On expensive full frame cameras maybe that's a lot more accurate but not the cameras that I have or use. So anyway your control is in Photoshop and Lightroom. Take the time to make that image perfect. As perfect as you can. I cannot believe. These are all tricks that you can do but this one here this could have been so easily fixed. So easily fixed. I just cropped off a little bit of that distracting the dark area there. You see the difference here. Again this is the edge of that background. He probably didn't see that when he shot it but then he didn't take the time to actually work on it and refine it in his editing uh, software. It took me all of two minutes to do that and this is a thousand percent better than this and I also removed that annoying reflection and this reflection as you can see it does not exist any longer. All right that is it just a little bit of um, just the way that I do things this may not be at all what you do or what your workflow is like but this is how I edit and how I try to improve on just about every image that I decide to print. Not everything goes to print maybe one percent of anything I shoot goes to print. Today I said as I said in my earlier video I was going to go to Walter Reed Army Medical Center to get my meds and my wife's meds and I always take the time to um, walk down the hallways and look at the all of the photographs that they have they are huge prints that they have there and gosh all of them could use some improvement some of them are a little bit crooked where they should not be some of them are just just badly composed and oh but anyway they're there mine are not so hey more power to them all right thank you so much again forgive me about that erroneous error I had no clue that it was going to be a fake site and I hope that eBay immediately took them down because when I went back to look it was gone so that's good and the one that was here in the U.S. I'm still not sure about what that was about and uh, the seller had a different name than what came up on PayPal so I quickly deleted it I canceled it and I changed my password and so cross my finger nothing bad happens it's been a fun day today so please again don't forget to subscribe share and like and until the next time happy printing bye bye oh by the way somebody gave me a thumbs down because I named that video it's he is going to be here or something like that somebody thought it was a bit too um, clickbaity no it wasn't clickbait something is going to be here and you wouldn't believe the surprise that I had yeah so it wasn't really clickbait. Clickbait is when you claim something in the title and then you do not deliver. That's clickbait. All right. Thank you once again. Happy printing, everybody. Bye-bye.